Check, check. Can you hear us? Check, check. It's going to be a grungy one today. If you could hear us, let us know where you're at. setup today. One of the most messy, grungy setups I've ever seen. So grungy and messy, we don't even know how to chase it. And we're the best storm chasers in the world out here. So uh, we might have to pivot to a flash flood mode at times. We expect maybe some supercells to evolve along the southern edge of this complex of storms. Those will have the opportunity to produce tornadoes because the low level wind shear is quite high, especially along this warm frontal zone. We got Gizmo on board. She has a little bit of an attitude problem today, understandably so, you know, understandably so. And, you know, I, I've got an attitude problem myself. So, but we're headed north to Fairfield, Texas. Flash flood warnings up and down this line. The Weather Prediction Center has a moderate risk. Small chance uh, the rental car even gets swamped today. Hopefully not. But uh, the Storm Prediction Center has a 10 hatch area for significant tornadoes basically centered around Lufkin up toward the Shreveport area and uh, we're gonna head up to Fairfield, Texas see what kind of flooding is up here looks like we've had about a half a foot of rainfall up there we got we got E Pluribusunum over here America. he is uh, wearing his uh, favorite bandana and we are heading north right now headed toward Fairfield we are sponsored by the United States today. <laughs> well, look up ahead of us. You can see a bit of a base. I'm going to zoom in on it. We definitely do have a shelf up there, mega shelf, and behind it, very heavy rain. Prolific rainfall rates up here. That's where we're headed. You can see that shelf right on the horizon. Turn around, don't drown. Do not do as we do out here. We have got a big monster rental. We are going to be providing coverage of these flash floods that other people cannot safely do. Got the laundry done as well. Very happy about that. I'm just mainly happy that I got some clean laundry for the first time in a month. Still though, I haven't showered in about two weeks. It's just the name of the game. It's storm season right now. This is what we do. But yeah, right over Fairfield, a pretty intense rain core. This complex stretches all the way back toward Rosebud, almost to Round Rock area. We got a new mesoscale discussion discussing a continuance of the tornado watch, possible extension downstream. But you're going to see milky skies, you're going to see grunge, you're going to see rain, you're going to see trees today. That's mainly what the live stream is going to be with flash flood potential and also the threat of a tornado. Let's chase yesterday. Gizmo's just pissed. I'm petting her as you can see. I have to pet her the whole time. She'll get upset. But we're just now coming into this heavy rain core. This isn't Little League anymore. We are focused on this flash flood threat. 
flash flood right in front of us. Pretty heavy rain is moving back into the Fairfield area. Two to four inch per hour rain. They were coming to it right now. We're not heading around today. They're headed off to the east tomorrow. A moderate risk in effect tomorrow. Southeastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, usual areas. Probably going to wait in the Brookhaven area just to the south of Jackson. They even go to that the flaming pig again. What was that? that pig? I think it was the flaming. What's the flaming pig? and pine. Pig and pine. Pig and yeah, pine. That was amazing. Yeah. Pig and pine. We're going to head there again. Maybe in Jackson. Then we'll head back again. But we're getting some very heavy rain here, folks. Stay tuned. The real deal here. Team Dominator. Very heavy rain. Flash flood potential. Turn around. No drought. Never admit boss. It's just happy to be there. 
and it's so happy that it busts just because there's not a pack of severe weather anywhere. But we're headed up to rainfall data. Brian, if you look at that hourly rainfall data, you can see that blob just to the west of Fairfield. Oh, look at that. Look at the timing. Puddling, I mean. Ponding, yeah. I mean, it, that works too. Little ponds everywhere. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, welcome really fast. Uh, check, check. Yes, uh, this is, we also have Connor here today. You can see he's also in the grunge. Um, we are going to, I'm going right back to read uh, in a second. They need to rewire something. Um, but uh, 20 seconds, we'll be back to them. Uh, but let's go to Connor for a second. This, as you can see above me, this is, uh, well, let me switch for one second. So uh, the here we go. We have the uh, tornado watch on the outside here. Up here we have a severe thunderstorm warning. This yellow, and then all this green is flash flood warnings. So yeah, you can see it's pretty grungy. It's pretty extensive today. Um, let me just uh, we'll go to Connor for about fifteen seconds, and we'll be right back with. Uh, oh no, they're ready. Back to Reed and Edgar. Welcome to Dew. This is the town of Dew. Dew? Dew? Yeah. What's the Dew point in Dew? Right now it's Fairfield. We're just covering the flooding now. The wasp model. It does have a couple of bubblers in the central Texas kind of behind it, so it's busted. Mm. But I bet it'll be kind of behind the low level sphere, too. Yeah. Yeah, Brian, we're headed to Fairfield, Texas for this last flood of morning right now. Connor is going to be headed west. Some of the short range models showing those tail producers in Central Texas later. Out here, brown weather storms trying to develop. Got a 
Jack put water here in Taylor Field. I'm going to be headed up towards the Jim Creek area. We're going to sample some of the extreme hydrology, the hydrology that's happening. This boat's just a chance.
go and put spare cattle down. Sweet. Are they gonna stop? The key to documenting a flood is to get as close to it as possible to make it look bigger. Easy to do, but sometimes you can submerge the whole thing. Just get right at the level. I just dip it into the water. I mean, those poles are water resistant. Yeah. Better show the consistency of the turbidity and the flow rate. Yeah. 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 Normally I like to work flush, I have a little bit of terrain to work with. Flow, you know, I like to I get excited about fast flow. There's some flooding here, sir. Sure, he is. He's up there. Get on this. Here, get that. Take this off and shoot it, sir. Yeah. Let it probably get out and get wet. Yeah, I'm gonna get out here with you. Okay, I got my trusty bandana to protect the girl. There it is, folks. Already a little bit of flooding. Ooh. I'll get out here in a sec, too. Oh, look over here. Oh, my God! <laughs> Higher chance of seeing a respectable looking storm. I've been watching this West Target since yesterday afternoon, chat, and I knew in the back of my head it could be a play. And uh, yeah, I know the tornado potential is higher east, but like, how are you going to see it when you have like a reservoir of like 50 foot trees? I think East Texas and West Louisiana, right on the border, might actually be like the worst terrain in Dixie. stream so I am leaving I'm leaving the 10% hash risk I'm leaving this line and I'm blasting west call me crazy but we are blasting west towards Brownwood Texas much better chance of supercells over there rather than this mode right here which is going completely just linear it might just be pure flash flood mode in the 10 hatch with some embedded tornadoes that are just gonna be a pain to dig out so we are blasting a oh, big stick what are you doing, Freddy? Oh, that's why. Whoa! Anyway, I'm blasting west towards Brownwood, Texas. Already got some storms going up over there, it looks like. Hold on, Brian. I can't really focus on the breakdown here. I gotta try not to die. Literal rivers across this road, but... Blasting towards the west target. There is an MD for the West Target, and I think it, we should get a really photogenic supercell. So Reed will be over here covering that 10% hash risk, embedded tornado potential within the line, maybe a strong tornado if a discrete supercell can get going. But I'm going to be out west playing the more photogenic target. Flash. It does not get any 
got major flash flooding here as we go west, but yeah, flash flood risk is real across portions of East Texas, embedded tornadoes within the line, and I would show you guys some stuff on my maps to kind of like justify my decision and show you what I'm seeing, uh, but I gotta be locked in right now because every other freaking bump, there's a river. All right, so I'm jumping in to explain what uh, Connor was saying there. So he was talking about the hatched area and all that good stuff. So stand by. Uh, so the SPC has, let's just go here. So here's the SPC's website. We have this enhanced risk area today. And if we go on tornado potential, you can see there's this big hatched risk area, which means that if tornadoes go up there, they can be very large. Um, so, uh, but today from the start has started to just turn into kind of a very rainy, grungy mess. Uh, and so it sounds like Reed and Edgar are gonna stay in this and try to basically dig out a tornado if one goes up uh, in this area. And Connor's going to go a little further to the west and give us a completely different look. So over the course of the day, we'll have two different looks at two different areas of Texas. Uh, and Reed and Edgar may even uh, be going into Louisiana today, too. Uh, so that is, the, uh, that is the breakdown of what the game plan is today. Here is... Uh, when I bring up this map, or when we show you this, this is Connor, the yellow, and red is in the uh, Reed is in the red. Um, so let's go back to Reed and Edgar now, and welcome to the stream. Please hit the like button. Here's Reed. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, fast flowing? Oh, that way looks way better. Turn right on that street. Yeah. Oh, going toward the creek. It's a limb in the road. Yeah. Hey, hold on. Yeah. Oops. This battery off my yeah. feet. I think we're gonna. I don't wanna get shot. This <laughs> <Look. laughs> I'm not sure how wet that's supposed to get.
Uh, all right, so I'll keep an eye on their connection. I'm going to show you uh, what they just filmed when they jumped out of the car here. And boom. We have flash flooding right now at Fairfield, Texas. Here you can see some prolific runoff. We've already had about a half a foot of rainfall just upstream. Areas like Mims Creek, Hog Creek are starting to flood out. We're also starting to get some puddling in town as well. And uh, the flash flood threat is going to be prolific here across East Texas into Louisiana, maybe even more significant than the severe weather threat. And that's why the Weather Prediction Center has a moderate risk for excessive rainfall out here. Scenes like this are quite commonplace through East Texas into Louisiana, and they're only going to get worse as these storms continue to train over the same area. We have a semi-permanent boundary that stretches from southwest to northeast, and the storm motion is also parallel to that boundary. Here you can see the flooding. Fairfield, Texas, flash flood warning in effect for at least a couple more hours. Likely will be extended though, as we have these two to four inch per hour rainfall rates moving in. All right, so that was uh, what just happened and their connections back. Looks like there's more flooding. Here we go. We could do a, right? we could do a really dramatic ass live in that creek. <laughs> Yeah, it is. This is going up. Shot here in a second. Yeah, I'd be willing to get out. Yeah, we, let's make it worth it. Yeah. <laughs> like dramatically worth it. Yeah, but I am always willing to. I'm like I'm gonna be uh, you video with and after you're done I'll be go send it. 
there. You're right, Goose. She finds the flash. She. Oh, you can get it. Uh, no, I was just I was spitting on you there for a minute. Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Deep up there. Yeah, very deep. Uh, it's pretty deep. No show. You think we can do it? I do. That Jeep just made it. I mean, we thought like we got a bigger part than that, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to this video. It's like we get stuck for a <laughs> Pretty deep, man. We're up all the way up to the bumper. Bumper? Bumper. You think I should back it up? I think we probably uh, yeah. Is it on the bumper on your side too? Yeah, I can't. It's hard to see. <clears throat> yeah, we're definitely at the bumper. Yeah, keep going. That next slide. We might be able to, but we also could just float and get stuck here. But I'm down to try. It looks like it goes, like once we get there, it looks like it goes up. Oh. But that, that street sign's concerning, huh? That's off to the left? Yeah, it is concerning. <laughs> that street sign is really high Pull up. Back. <laughs> back it up! Dang. These houses are just getting flooded, son. Man. I'm 
Swift water rescue is happening. Yeah, I hear that, huh? Are we ambulance chasing? <laughs> I'm gonna pop a bird up. Should we do a uh, aslime up there? Oh, right. I'll, oh, yeah, yeah for right sure. Yeah, I think that's probably. And if we're actually under these trees a little bit, probably won't get yeah. soaking. Yeah. See that one dry area right there? <laughs> we both saw it. Oh, yeah. there comes swift, swift water rescues. Oh, here they come. Is they coming out? Yeah, let's make sure we're not in the path. Let's get it. That footage. I'm wondering if that road's eroded there at all. I think it could be. Record. Record some Here they come. They had just realized that they can go no further forward, huh? Yeah. And while they're sitting there, we could do an outside. Like, yeah. Let's go. Just that little dry spot, just a little bit. It'll be perfect. What was that? Did you hear that? Uh uh. Something big just happened. Is a tree coming down or something? Can you hear that? Uh -oh. I did kind of hear something. Well, we're right by a bunch of big trees, so. Is it that one right there leaning? Maybe. That's a huge tree. Let's see what that's like. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yes. Right, that's gizmo in the car that you hear and uh she wants to be reed center of attention at all times uh, but reed is going to do an as live now uh, basically we are in fairfield texas right now and yes that ambulance is looking for another way hopefully it can get where it needs to uh, so if we look at rainfall rates we're kind of so here we are in Fairfield if you look above me here some of these areas had if you could see it before this is this this area 3.2 inches per hour that's north of Fairfield this right here in Fairfield, we're just north, northeast of it, 3.3 inches an hour rainfall rate. So that's why the flooding is so bad. And you can see all these little dark, dark areas. Wow, 5.1 inches of rain per hour north of Oakwood. Looks like it just updated there. But yeah, this is this whole crazy line that originally today looked like a tornado setup. I mean, it still it still does. It's more favorable for for that later on, though. Uh, looks like they're back in the car. Let's see. Woo! Nice, Ooh, baby. This 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 truck's gonna smell awesome by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but that's getting all wet. Yeah. Shoes <laughs> wet. Oh, it's going to be great. Okay. Um, let's see. Cap cut. Um, new project. Good job. One minute, 30 seconds. Right on my stop. Emergency vehicles on 
the other side of the flood here. We There's something happening. Water. Yeah, it's something's like happening. To, it's something to pop the drone up. This is an example yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah. It's, not, it it's not raining too, too bad right here. No. It's certainly getting a lot bigger, and we've already had four to six. It's happening super fast. You want me to get you the drone? Yeah, I can get it right in the back seat. <laughs> Maybe they're just closing the road. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I got a bigger truck. I don't even think the big fire truck can get through that. I probably don't need to put any. Yeah, controller. Oh, there it is. I probably don't need to put a lot of over dubs on this one, not just because of that. Yeah. Yeah, I figure this one's just more dramatic to yeah. see what's happening behind you. Rather expected East Texas and Louisiana. That'll be a hard flight. Pretty windy. Yeah, it is kind of gusty, huh? Is this the only area of flooding? No, oh, that. I mean, this, this was the deep. first creek we tried, and I mean, I bet it's going up and down. They're coming through. Oh, they are. Looks like it. This is what for the rest of you right here. It's like they are. They definitely are. They're getting ready to do a rescue. We can get a little bit closer up there on that. Yeah, that's wild. Could just be somebody that needs medical assistance. Could be that too, yeah. file sir as live I wonder if this is the only flooding I think I should fly the drone or save it it's pretty windy yeah I think we could save it I mean I think if we go find some other creeks too yeah. you know, I want to see if this is what they do here with the rest of them I don't know which phone are you sitting this one right mm. neither one of them so maybe the jeep wants to drive through that's the in front of us. He's mm -hmm. gonna try to go around. That's <laughs> crazy.
Yep, that was their house. That one make it? Did I accept? Yep, that one's pretty good. You got it. Alright folks, we got a live update here. Flash flooding, Fairfield, Texas. We got some emergency vehicles that are on the scene. Alright guys, just showing you this that yeah, we have two main modes of chasing today. And you can see this is uh, this is where Reed is, Reed and Edgar, or in the flash flood threat, and which this area later uh, could be a tornado threat. I mean, it is a tornado threat today. Um, it lessened a bit, uh, but we got to keep an eye on it. It's definitely not over. And then over here, you have Connor heading west in the clear sky. Yeah clear skies right you can see these guys are in the mess connor just broke free from this mess and now he's got clear skies and he's going for a western target because he believes that there's going to be very sculpted supercells out there um so he's gonna he's leaving the what we call the hatched risk area which is this is the storm prediction center this is the uh this is their warning for today this is the tornado warning. You can see this hatched area. That's where it's supposed to be. Um, if a tornado goes up, it's supposed to be very, very, could be really strong there. That's a special pattern they do for that. Uh, so Reed and Edgar are going to stay in this area. Connor is going to go out a little bit further here. Uh, but uh, let's go back to Reed and Edgar. Thanks for watching. Well, right now, but I am able to stream on my phone here at times. This is Fairfield, Texas. Freestone County. Thank you, Tammy. What do you think, Gizmo? Those dogs. <laughs> Yep. These are good guard dogs over there. They're probably freaking out about the flood. Hey there, Roger. Yeah, it looks like down near Mims Creek, we could probably even drive through these floodwaters. But you don't want to. Always turn around, don't drown. Assume that it could loft you. Cause you to float away, and then you'll be in a rescue situation. You can definitely hear sirens happening throughout town. I think that there was just a medical emergency here with the flash flood right in front. That's me, Derek. Oh yeah, there they go. They're off. I would say about a half a foot so far, and we could even approach double digits in spots. Saw some homes that have been some been swamped as well. <laughs> They're howling. Those are howling now. I guess. plan is to maybe drop down toward the Crockett area and get a little bit southeast of the convective line and see if we can get some more tornadoes as well. We just tried and then we backed up because we didn't feel comfortable they were coming through that. But yeah, we could probably make it. I think we can make it now. Let me try. 
<laughs> yeah, I think you should. I don't know if my camera ready. I'm going to play video on this. Easy, easy. Silverado, got it. Yeah, don't do as we do here, everybody. We got a big. Souped up vehicle. So I'm mostly just kind of low lying area so far, seeing the flooding. Moderate risk for excessive rainfall by the Weather Prediction Center. Never stop chasing. We'll be back live here in a little bit. What? I think they're just dropping south. Um, all right, let's go to Connor for a second. I just got a new video uh, from the guys in the field that I'll show you to really show off the flooding. Let me cue that up for you. We actually don't have that. We actually don't have very far to our target, honestly. See what fast food is in Waco along our stop, or along our road. You tell him. All right, so yeah, bingo, bango, bongo. Nope. All right. Here we go.
house, dude. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah, this is a few minutes ago. The guys, are, we're still going. Just showing you there are a couple more minutes of, uh, you know, out of the car sort of stuff. right now in Fairfield, Texas. Here you can see some prolific runoff. We've already had about a half a foot of rainfall just upstream. Areas like Mims Creek, Hog Creek are starting to flood out. We're also starting to get some puddling in town as well. And uh, the flash flood threat is going to be prolific here across East Texas into Louisiana. Maybe even more significant than the severe weather threat. And that's why the Weather Prediction Center has a moderate risk for excessive rainfall out here. Seems like this are quite commonplace through East Texas into Louisiana, and they're only gonna get worse as these storms continue to train over the same area. We have a semi-permanent boundary that stretches from southwest to northeast, and the storm motion is also parallel to that boundary. Here you can see the flooding. Fairfield, Texas, flash flood warning in effect for at least a couple more hours. Likely will be extended though, as they have these two to four inch per hour rainfall rates moving in. All right, so that was uh, a few minutes ago. You could see up here the guys are uh, on the move, maybe. We'll see. But Connor is breaking free of all this flooding. And you see he's chasing a western target. So um, let's, let's join Connor for a few, and then we'll jump back to Dominator. Getting on these storms when they fire, so...
sure if there's any good wood-fired pizza, but personally, I don't have time to get pizza right now anyway, so. What's up, uh, Orem? Doing good, man. How are you? Just blasting, uh, blasting east. Or west, away from the east target. Isolated tornado threat may develop. So, I, like, that threat is cooked, bro. Yeah, Chad, we definitely made the right decision going west. Are you 
getting any of the messages that I'm sending? Dude, my messages are just not sending. Test, test. Alright, my cell is just not working. What the heck? Almost to a thousand likes on the stream. Thanks for all the support. Get 
best interest just to continue up with this wine, don't you think? Yeah, probably. I just don't know if it can destabilize behind the line or not. It's probably kind of like yesterday, how you get a bunch of ale these things out there. Yeah. Looks like a more front trying to lift north on the Louisiana. That's a tree for you. You play near the whole front back here, maybe at the western edge of that line. But Where it has the convective line moving into good target the Cape Lob. Yeah, Brian, you may want to watch out down near San Antonio. Could get interesting. Otherwise, it looks like we're going to be punching it into Louisiana, eventually Nacogdoches, Texas. That's our target right now, Nacogdoches, north of uh, Lufkin. He merged, he merged into me. How was I not paying attention? I'm the one that dodged him. What? How am I the one not paying attention? Yeah, I saw the Whataburger. Testing. Nothing. Yeah, Freddie would have uh Freddie would have been my witness there. Like that like buddy, you yield to me. I don't move for you because you want to get over. You yield to me. It's like, no, sorry buddy, like. It's on you, cuz. Welcome to storm chasing, OH. That's literally like, yeah, welcome to storm chasing, buddy. Should get going with probably around 3, 3.30. We, we chose a different uh, 
chose a different target, so we have a little bit of a break from the storms here. and restarted but you guys want to stay live so for the people wondering where the storms are we're just changing targets right now they're gonna happen in the next couple hours so apologize for the downtime it's just kind of part of a uh, part of chasing sometimes Supercell is dead? What does that even mean? What does that even mean? Testing, testing. Oh my gosh, it's a miracle. What was the problem? I don't know, I just restarted my app for like a fifth time and then I, it just works now. not but the new ace triple r is wild okay i'm glad to see you guys are enjoying the stream yeah this is like this is against my new motto of only streaming storms but i guess we did start on storms and now we're just moving trying to merge into me. All right, looks like we're good. Let's do it, Sammy, let's do it. If I'm ever in New York, when the weather permits, let's run around to golf. I'm totally down for that, Sammy. Appreciate it, Brandy. It's literally like 300 SRH on a boundary with 200 pre-game like. Dude, we're gonna speak. We could definitely see something freaking crazy today. Just look at the supercell composite on the new one. It's all you'll need to see. Yeah, we're, now we're getting to the beautiful part of Texas. Seventy dew 
points too. Gatesville, at least. together.
makes us just a few miles south of me. Nice. All right, Freddy. <laughs> nice one. Said this McDonald's is on this road just like further ahead.
McDonald's either, but it's 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 easy. It's it's, it's just simple. It's on our way. I, we don't really have time to get anything uh, that great. It just came out three minutes ago. I still haven't seen anything on that. So if you're lying to me, I might just like put you in timeout because nothing makes me more mad than when somebody says something's happening and it's not. But hey, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right.
Yeah, I'm happy to help. Just east of Ross, right at the apex of the bow echo. Give me a little bit of cyclonic spin. Here, Reclaw. Reclaw looks interesting. Get ahead of that convective cluster. We've got to navigate some of the flash floods on the way, but there still is a chance that there could be an increase in tornadoes across far east Texas into western Louisiana. Temperatures are starting to destabilize out ahead of this complex. And also that's where all the low-level wind shear is located, east Texas into Louisiana. So we're going to continue going off to the east, get ahead of this line, and that gives us the best chance of seeing tornadic activity this afternoon and evening. working on the RAV4 at home. He's, my dad's been kind of helping me set it up or basically setting it up for me. So hopefully we're able to get the next, uh, I mean, we should have the RAV4 out next chase. It's just a matter of everything will be set up in it or we'll just kind of be doing what we're doing now with one camera. But the RAV4 will like 90% be out for the next trip. 90%.
Mustangs up here. Looks like our McDonald's is up here. Here's our beautiful McDonald's chat. I'm probably gonna go in to stretch my legs, so I'm not gonna be able to bring you guys in, so just bear with me. I'll probably be in there for like five minutes, but just need to stretch my legs a little bit. I'm probably gonna go in, honestly. So, you guys just stay in here. Oh, dude, I can't even. I'd have to leave the car on. Bro, I forgot I have to leave the car on for my stream to run. Okay. Hey, I have to leave the car on for my stream to run, so I have to go through the drive thru. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just make sure no one steals my car, please. Hey guys. Uh, so I've been actively on the phone with other companies to uh, work on our problematic connection. Our super fancy uh, brand new device. It's a piece of crap. Um, so Connor uh, is at McDonald's. Um, you can see the guys are so the guys are headed east. Connor's headed west still, uh, and these guys. I mean, to be fair, this is a a tough area for reception, but still, I mean. <laughs> and now the audio's back in sync. So our audio's out of sync, our fancy thing doesn't work. You know, whatever. Hey, at least we got Team Dominator. No, it's just like you, you need to 
yeah, you just need to get these things and use them and be like, oh, this is bad. So on to the next thing now. Um, but we did uh, we did do our research. Anyway. I mean, yeah, I got nothing. Let's just uh, let's just chat, chat. Reed posted a quick, uh, yeah, video of the eclipse. For um, yeah, he he posted that yesterday. Yeah, and you know what I love about these these companies too is that they. Uh, you can't just be like, "Hey, how much? How much is the product? How much is the service?" They want to have a, an hour long uh, call with you to like drag it out and show you all these features that you don't need at all. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine, guys. This is uh, this is this is par for the course. This is production. This is what production is is pretty much like. Even in TV. All right, so we have a new severe warning going up, though. It's a pretty big area because it looks like this is kind of a almost straight line action here. Hold on. Yeah, you see this. This is kind of a wall of a uh, kind of a wall of uh, wind here. Sorry, I'm also trying to reconnect the guys here. Maybe they'll jump back up. All right, let's hang out with them as long as we can.
that area up north of the wreck law, a possible uh, increase in rotation. Is it water? Water? Both streams right here. Do it? <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not doing that, guys. Mess up Freddy's camera. Freddy messed up my camera, so I might have to... See, Freddy's was so quick. He's already coming back. You guys get to go back with Freddy, I guess. What's with the mullet? No, I, I like the mullet. I like the mullet. It was intentional. Freddy's stream. He's back. I'd be on ride all right now. 
Probably. Zip tie makes clicking noises? Okay. <laughs> I don't have any zip ties, but that would have been funny. Freddy, oh, Freddy's gone again. He's, he's going away. Freddy? Freddy? Come back, come get your phone, Freddy. Somebody told me to tie a zip tie around your drive shaft. What? <laughs> because apparently as you drive faster, it makes a really loud clicking noise, but it's harmless, so it's like a prank. Oh. Somebody in my chat told me to do it. I don't have zip ties. Not that I would do it anyway, but. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So just get back on the road. Yeah, let's just go down to La Palmas or whatever. Yeah, so that's, that's the way to go, probably. All right, Freddy's chat. It was good seeing you guys. You don't want to go with Freddy? Then 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 don't go with. <laughs> no, Steve. This is still not the new Rav Four. That's being worked on at home by my dad right now. Still not the new stream. Twenty twenty three, uh, Gabriel. Nobody's behind me here. And then bro just comes in the shower with a scooter. What? I have a water in my... I forgot to grab the water that's in my... Uh, shoot. I need to grab that. It's in my bag. It's all the way in the back here. Can't see back here. There we go. Oh, just in time too. Woo. I have water in the back. Put your yapping, Camry. I'm putting my seatbelt on. All right, let's get on this thing. Let's get south. We got the boundary. Hopefully, a storm can't go in within the next hour, but we might be sitting and waiting a little bit longer as well. Yeah, I was holding Freddy's stream while he went inside to get McDonald's. I didn't get fries. Sorry, Jack. Am I in McGregor? I feel like I'm not in McGregor. I feel like that McGregor. I feel like I'm in Gatesville. I'm gonna say I'm in McGregor. I don't even know where McGregor is, bro. <clears throat> Two point. Make sure Freddy's going south in 2.4. Dude, why is my audio always get auto turned down? PTSD there from that guy merging in. Hey, does your uh, GPS have you going south in like a mile and a half? Does your GPS have you going, bro, what? It says 
2.2 miles. Okay, yeah, that's what line has to. We're good. Thank you, Oregon Beach Dad. Appreciate it. Appreciate your super chat, man. Gabriel, I got the hybrid. anywhere on the cyclonic shear side, anywhere north of that apex to see if there's any spin happening. Looks like some kind of a rear inflow jet scenario starting. All in the acute. Try to be from town and lose signal in the middle of it either. Hey, how's it going? Great, another grungy day. I don't even know. I don't even know how to chase this. Just keep in front of it, I guess. We did get some good flooding earlier. All right, everybody, we are going to do a quick live here for AccuWeather. We're in Alto. Big tornado here, I think, in 2020. Yeah. You got low signal. Can you disconnect and connect again quickly? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Alto. Since I have 5G, so I, I should be okay. I'll, I'll uh, try to change cell towers and then sign right back in. Okay. Thank you. I sat for the signal. That's the one that went for the process.
All right, what's up, everybody? Reed's out doing a live for AccuWeather, so I just figured I'd uh, get on here and talk a little bit with the chat, answer some questions. But yeah, right now, for everyone that is wondering, we are right in Alto, Texas. Um, yeah. We're trying to connect. We're trying to get up with the, uh, the storms that, fo that is formed out in the front of this line. Right now, we're just kind of right even with the initial line. But as soon as Reed gets done with this, we'll definitely be able to uh, get back on track, get up there in front of this, and kind of see what's going to happen here. If it's just going to maintain being a flood threat or if it's going to end up turning into a tornado threat, it's hard to say. Yeah. The line that's in front of us is severe worn, so... Guys can kind of look and see where we're at here. We're right here on this blue dot, and man, yeah. We're going this direction, but there is a lot of rain. Look at that. Super messy out here today. Gray skies, you know, just lots of rain. It's a, definitely a tough chase. You've heard the word grungy used a million times, milky skies. You're gonna hear that a lot more today, for sure. Definitely some heavy rain out here. Saw a lot of flooding earlier as well. Uh, that flooding was quite, quite wild. We went down by a creek in Fairfield, Texas. It looked to be, uh, we were on the main roads. It didn't look like it was super, super flooding. But then we went on the back road by a creek and I mean, we saw water, fresh, water uh, rushing into homes, uh, trees falling over because the ground was oversaturated. Even saw like some EMS, emergency management services, or firefighters go and try to rescue someone and uh, that was kind of trapped in the middle of the flood. Looks like they were having a medical emergency. But yeah, there's been a lot going on so far today. Definitely the rain is the big story right now, the flooding, the flash flooding, because the same areas are just getting hammered and hammered over and over again with rain. What's up, everybody in the chat? Thank you guys for coming in. Gizmo's doing great. There you go. She's right down here. She's just in her like normal, waiting to see, wondering where Reed is. Uh, yeah, but she's doing great. Gizmo's doing just fine. Where are we headed? So right now we're kind of headed in the rent, the the way of uh, Natchitoches. Texas uh, and then we're going to kind of see where we go but our goal is mainly just to get out in front of this line if you look on radar you can see that line that convective line there and we're going to just try to stay out in front of this all day and kind of see what happens as it goes on yeah she's pretty adorable Yep, yep, yep. This can't sort of coming down out there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I just told them a lot of milk. Lots of milk. Four cats yeah. of milk. I told them, I was talking to the live stream, I was like, I think you're going to hear the word grunge and milk about 50 more times today. <laughs> What's my favorite tattoo? This right here, right here. A little tornado on the side of the head. Yeah, we're still trying to get in front of this. This line of storms right here, and just kind of stay out in front of it and see what happens. See if the tornado threat verifies or if we're just going to continue to have uh, the flash flooding threat with this. It's going to be a milky chase today, folks, but thank you. Welcome, new Team Dominator members. If anybody can dig a tornado out of this milk, it's Edgar and I. Yeah, we're going to dig deep for y'all today. Put the line, get in a little bit of instability, two point increase, 25 miles west from Nacogdoches just now. A lot of convection and I wouldn't be surprised to see some tornado warnings on the north side, that northern bookend vortex.
you have French foot at all? The wet feet? Oh yeah, my, my feet too. are just freezing cold. You've been peeling the skin off tonight. Oh yeah, we'll have the... the... <laughs> Get that loose flap. Yeah. Be all white and disgusting looking. <laughs> all the more reason to go get a pedicure when I get back. Edgar, do you ever get a little frightened when I'm chasing? No, not really. Not too bad.
I'm having like the mid chase, uh, I don't know, like just a tired wave because nothing much is going on, so I'm kind of just uh, blah.
Dixie's going to start early, so there's not going to be much time for sleep tonight. It's going to be a driving energy square type of night for me. It's going to probably be pretty rough. Put a little bit of rain X on here. I have low wiper fluid, so can't be overzealous with it. like a lot of like super saturated bright colors. Extended all the way to Monroe. So the low level wind shear is going to stay strong just to the east of this convective line. You get a little acceleration of the low level jet. I just looked at the wrap analysis and you've got two to three hundred zero to one kilometer shear from the Sabine River east through Natchitoches. So 
south of Monroe. Even Alexandria can't even see some renegade supercells later on today. The wrap model I saw in the next two to four hours is showing a renegade supercell that's moving through central Louisiana. But this is what it's going to be today, folks. It's going to be grungy. It's going to be milky. It's going to be messy. We're going to be covering a lot of flash floods. We can a lot of uh, when we can a lot of puddling, and um, there could be some elevated hailers that develop late here on uh, the Texas Hill Country. But a lot of the machine learning products, some of the outlooks, are showing a pretty high-end tornado threat tomorrow in southern Mississippi, Jackson, down toward Hattiesburg, Leakesville. Brookhaven, Natchez, all those areas in uh, southern Mississippi, even back toward New Orleans, Wiggins, Walker, Slidell, hell, even uh, the Gulfport, Pascagoula, watch out. But tomorrow, moderate risk is already in effect. Wouldn't be surprised if it's another crunchy.
if something does form down by like Austin a little later on, that might be even a, even a better storm. I know the HRR fire something down there. Uh, the, up north near here, the winds are just like a little bit too much coming out of the north rather than the east. It might change, but that's just something I was looking at on the zone analysis. development here within the next little bit I'd say. Just gonna sit in this town maybe for like 30 minutes to see what stuff looks like and then uh yeah, it'll be chase. It'll be full blown chase mode again, guys. So, if you guys have been, uh, no, I'm not behind Reed. Reed's in Louisiana. If you guys have been tuning with me this whole entire time, appreciate the support. Uh, hopefully, your patience will get rewarded. another Venmo it looks like maybe Is that the same one I think Lisa Palmer came in with another Venmo dono thank you so much Lisa wow yeah I think Lisa dropped another Venmo Thank you. 
is Brodus. A little thingy and Brodus. I would love to be in St. Augustine right now, but it would be okay to not be. Radar looking, you got a couple blips near Austin, one near Brownwood, and one in between that. So, I mean, we're starting to get stuff bubbling. It's just a matter of uh, what it does, I guess. Once it got wet too, it was really not fun to have on my head. <laughs> I just felt like I was walking around with a cold, wet rat. <laughs> See the blood pressure down there. Oh, that's right, that's right out now. You don't have to touch it. What I do like, it, it, has a, it keeps my balls sweaty and it's going in my face. Maybe I will. I'll ask my wife on a date. And when she comes out to get in the car, I'll just have this on. The voice papers will be filed right in the morning.
your brain here. We're going to be taking a ride right of the light from row 2259. Niner. My dad's watching along. He says, he just messaged him and said, I love watching these chases. Hello, Mr. O'Neill. Never stop chasing. Dominating out here. I'm trying to teach Edgar a little bit of pro red, white, blue two hour out here. <laughs> it's already wore off on me. Though. It is patriotism back. <laughs> you got an Olympics coming up, Summer Olympics even. I'm not gonna lie, I do, I do get into the Olympics. I do too. Yeah, I love it. Whenever, when Michael Phelps was like, remember when he was like winning all those? Oh yeah. Like I was in the music business, I was in so one of those big races, I was in Times Square in New York and they had it on the... The big oh, thing really? in New York stopped. Oh. Everyone in New York was stopped. And then when he won, like literally, like people were throwing things in the air. Wow. Like, it was super cool. What year was this last one? I don't know. 2015 or so? Yeah, I think, yeah, probably around there. He was an absolute good. Like his chest was just like, he had like the most white. <laughs> You want a summer window? I like both. You do. I like winter a little bit more. Okay, I like both. I love the like skeleton and the bees and all that. Any of the skiing or snowboarding also. Yeah. 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 I just put like the southeast side of uh, Round Rock and it looks like there's no traffic there. All right, chat, let's go get it. Got a little storm forming near Austin. Not sure if it's going to survive or be the one or what, but let's go find out. Full filled up on gas, ready to roll. an interesting storm down there. There are some towers getting a little bigger on the west side there, but yeah, I, I, I'd still like the, uh, the Austin storm right now. Might even stay put a little longer if uh, like roads were a problem, but like we're literally just going south. It's easy to go back like west or even north if we have to. So might as well just start heading towards the home of the storm that looks the best at the moment.
even see the due south road, but mine takes me down 183. my tablet about to die. What? It doesn't even make sense. Okay, I'm about to close out chat, guys. My tablet's about to die. For whatever reason, I don't even know how. guy's the one or not. I'm in Austin, 
So we'll be watching this storm closely. Uh, let's look at the storm that they're talking about here. Let's do it over here. Here's this storm. This storm is actually moving straight this way right now. It's moving fairly slowly. Anyway, we will keep a close eye on it, guys. I promise you that. Let's go back to Reed and Edgar. That's crazy. I really want to go on Sunday at 10.30 now. <laughs> So yeah, we are looking at this and actually the new track has this thing just headed straight this way, but it doesn't seem right. It's firing up. Yeah, it's, this thing is moving more right. <clears throat> Hold on one sec. I'll show you guys what I'm looking at. Go to Connor for a sec. Oh, no, oh, these guys are struggling to hang on there.
All right, so this this is the track, but if we animate it, sure looks like it's moving pretty much kind of that away, maybe maybe like that. So yeah, this is a tall storm. It's uh, almost to 50,000 feet. It's just to the west of Austin. You just heard Connor on one side of Texas and Reed on the other, both saying, look at, watch this storm. Um, so we'll continue to look at it. It's, it is, as Reed was saying, getting kind of like slightly, a bit of a bean shape to it. Here's where it comes up here. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. Let's go to Connor.
go down. Yeah, Chad, I'm locked into chase mode now, so not gonna be looking at chat really.
seven miles and we turn right. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep blasting. Not interested in that western storm to be honest, chap. sink so we have a severe severe warning the storm that connor is going to is this storm it's a severe warning for the storm that is headed north of austin kind of between austin and round rock So it does have a severe warning. We're going to keep an eye on this. Um, we will be back. Back to Connor. Uh, yeah, back to Connor for a bit. Ton of like clean air bolts on the south side of Austin. Dude, 
you see all those clean air bolts on like the south side of the storm? Radar Omega has like 50 bolts, like almost like like just west of downtown Austin, like to the south of the storm. Maybe it's like glitching. I mean, if that's true, then that means that this thing is rapidly intensifying. Too. I hate merging onto the highway right after semis, man. I can never get up to a good enough speed. This is our road. We're going south towards our severe worn storm now. Let's get it. Oh, I should have just turned right after him. I would have had a dang it. All right, well, live and you learn. Yeah, the radar 
we're getting right now is this uh, this uh, convection cell down near Broadus. Now we're gonna see if it has a base. Looking out to the right here, we've got a little bit of a rain cord. If we get out in front of this, maybe it'll have an updraft base. Right now we're on 103, Highway 103, get a little bit closer to the Louisiana border. Storm Prediction Center maintained that threat of a strong tornado over East Texas. with this MCS. It might just be cloudy and grungy the whole way to the target tomorrow. But boy, if we were out covering those hail producers in Austin, it would be a long drive to Southern Mississippi for tomorrow. So, figured we would cover the more immediate tornado threat as that low-level jet action pushes east into Louisiana. Looks like it. Take the chicken chunks like an Eastburger appetite, huh? Yeah. <laughs>
boundary, and we can always shoot back north towards the mega hailer.
Just tuning in, we're getting on the severe one storm near Austin, Texas, sitting over the downtown and may have an increasing tornado threat. It'll be a dangerous scenario developing here for the Austin area. Even though the shear isn't great, this thing can do some funny stuff. This thing can do some funny stuff, chat. Nice 
Clyde Eagle shape on that supercell on the north side of Austin. You guys push Brian hard enough, maybe you get him to point the camera north even. Or even chase it. So you just hop in the car and go after it. Yeah. Head up there and get after that uh, hail producer here north. I would. There's just a lot of buttons to push here. Sweet time, but I mean, I feel like sometimes these storms on the boundary like that don't even need to look crazy and they'll drop like land spouty hybrid thingies. You can see the top of the storm. Wow. You can see the top of the storm. Look at the Mamadis clouds on the edge there. You can see the very top of the storm, the anvil cloud, with a little bit of Mamadis on the edge. Wow. Wow, 
there's some inflow tail clouds going into the storm, I think, up there as well. Starting to see the textbook features of the storm now that we're getting close to it.
see something off to my right. Just looks like the storm in general, but I can't show it to you guys because our GoPro's dead. see anything from here and then if not we'll just blast into the Austin Metro I guess so it would allow me to turn. There's a storm.
road takes us. I guess look for somewhere to stop and look at this thing. It's coming at us now. It's moving right pretty fast. Just need to find a good place to sit. big hill over to the left there. That's not helping our cause. It's like a giant hill off to the left. signal. Yeah, I don't know how to see this thing. I think I have to turn around. Just don't know how to see it, man. Maybe I'll try going a little bit further north on this road, I guess. No, this one was okay. I think I there's a little clearing on Stadland I might be able to find. Okay. Sorry guys, we're just going in circles here, but I'm trying to find a place to see it, and it's not easy. residential area here. find a way to get like or over this giant hill there's like a giant I think it's a landfill there's like a giant landfill in the way of where we should be able to see our storm you'll see it when I turn right here it's literally a giant landfill it's like geez okay this could be the road Sorry, it's going to be a little bit bumpier, chat, because I don't have the uh, my, the thingy to make it stable. I had to take it off so I could be able to turn it. And this road is rough. Just, just got to get pa over past this landfill. Well, the faster this thing gets out of Austin, the better. Stupid Austin, man. the giant hill off to our left. It's a giant hill off to our left. Can't see jack squat. That's where our storm is. <sighs> Maybe coming around. 
around this. We'll see it. But there's nowhere to stop. Oh, here's a great view. Okay, maybe I'll stop here. Just rocks. I mean, you can't even stop right here, dude. Can't even stop right here, dude. I mean, what the heck, man? Literally rocks right there. Like, what? Why couldn't that be a normal little road? Or here's the storm. Saw it for a brief second. Maybe there's a place on this hill. Just driving over rocks there. So weird. Maybe when we get over this hill. Did you find a good spot to watch this thing? No, dude, I am struggling. Maybe over here? <clears throat> yeah, I'm just trying to find a spot, obviously, but I, everything I find has like a wall. Mm. Yeah, there's just so many trees here for some reason. I'm gonna do a U-turn and try and get back to that other spot that I was at. That's literally our only chance to see this thing. Wow. May I think I'm, I might rather be in Dixie than this. What the heck, dude? What the heck is this place? I mean, there's right here, but you're not seeing anything. Guess we'll just try and get back on top of that mountain. I don't know. I uh, really don't know. mountain thing even was. Okay, I go straight here. I just gotta look for random rocks on the side of the road for no reason. It's like a rock driveway, except it's like boulders. Should be on top of this next hill. It's ridiculous. Okay, should be right up here. Okay, so there's the rocks that are there for no reason. And here is another little pull-off zone that somewhat does us something, I guess. I mean, it's better than nothing. Yeah, this is better than nothing, I think. I mean, this is the best we're gonna get for now. I mean, I don't know. That's the best we're gonna get, I think. So you can I back up more? It's about all we're gonna get, guys. It's just got a big, flat base. in 
they just happen to find some sort of like little like I don't know, I'm on like this little like mountain, like there's still like trees blocking the stream's view, but like we can at least like see a little bit. It's right back there. It's right there. I'm not overly impressed with the way it looks, so if it gets to me and it still kind of looks like it does, I might go back for that one that you were going to go for. Yeah, I was really wanting to go for the back one, but it just, you know, it was like this one was like 30 minutes away, the other one was like an hour 45, so that's why I went for this one, because it was just closer, but if it keeps looking like it's weakening, I'm going to go for the western one too. Chad, just keep an eye on it, I don't know. <laughs> See if this thing organizes by the time it gets to us. If it doesn't organize, we'll probably go for the west one, even though it might have lower tornado potential. It just looks like a beast of a storm out back out west there. Big hail on that west one. Looks like we had a severe thunderstorm warning for it. Right over downtown. See, it's just got a, a broad base to it, chat. Nothing too crazy.
interesting. I don't really see anything that would make me think it should be, but I guess it is tornado warned. Dude, I'm so far away from that one. I won't get to. I won't get get to it until dark. I'm like 90 miles away from it, so can get to it by like seven or like before seven. Yeah, maybe we should go west, chap. This one just doesn't look that good right now. I start heading for the west one, Chad. I don't know. I just I don't see much going on with this right now. I mean, it looks cool, but it doesn't look like it wants to do much right now. That west one looks like it's just moving into stable air, though, is the thing. Stay on this one. I don't know, guys. Problem is, the west one is like further away. stay right here for now. Doesn't look great, but it does have a base. It's moving. Ooh, it might have just pushed the boundary south. That would be a problem. Huh. 
going right over downtown. That's one we're any closer, I would just go for it, but it's just so far away that it's like my stream just has to sit through another two hours of just no storm. I say that's a bad one. Yeah, I just, that's just not a great decision right now. It just doesn't look great, Chad. It just it, I don't know. It's something missing with this guy. Something missing. There's something just not right about this guy. He's, he's struggling. Very far away from many now. Basically, staying right, right in the front of this line. Just about to get back into the milk. All right. Should be driving slowly out here.
storm on my stream right now. Like you, you can see, it's just a big, it's just a big flat base. Like nothing special to it. I'm just gonna stay on this one chat for now. I mean, the other one doesn't look any more likely to produce a tornado than this one, so. Just gonna keep watching this one, I guess, and we'll, uh, we'll follow it as it heads east. It's definitely gonna need to ramp up a little bit more than it is right now, though, if it's gonna produce. I mean, it has good echo tops. Echo tops are good on it. Still severe worn for two inch hail. Like it, it, it definitely still has potential, so we're just gonna stay on it. It's right in the meteor meteorologically favorable zone for significant severe weather on the on the triple point, so. There's the whale's mouth feature here. We're gonna head to western Louisiana. Gizmo's just pissed, meanwhile. Gizmo, why are you so mad? Hmm? <laughs> why you gotta be so rude? Yeah, she's working me all day today. Ever since we've been in this car, really. Something about the truck, I think. She's yeah. just oh, she was comfortable sitting in the truck. Is that like her favorite position to be held? Yeah, to be held. Yeah. She likes it. Like that. She just wants to walk. I think. Yeah, she just wants to be outside. I mean, she just wants out.
you looked at it, Morgan. She wants food. of it now. behind the gust front. See the mottled appearance? Yeah, you can definitely see the top of the whale's mouth. That's the top of the stable layer. You'll get a lot of turbulence up there. We are in many Louisiana right now. We're only positioning for tomorrow by keeping pace with the... Uh, Mesoscale convective system. Thanks, Connor, for dominating that hail producer out in Austin. It does look a little bit elevated to me. The structure looks a little smooth. Whatever looks really smooth like that is probably a little bit elevated, but it could turn off to the right and maybe try to latch on to that outflow boundary. And we are in Budin Ball country out here. We'll have to get some boot-in balls somewhere tonight. But yeah, we are deep in the jungle, 5.20 p.m. You can see how dark it looks. And I'll show you the whale's mouth. Look at the whale's mouth up there, pretty mottled cloud cover. That's all kind of a, a lot of turbulence on top of the cold pool. And you can see that we're a little bit behind that outflow boundary. We're about to pass east of it. Temperature is about 74 degrees just ahead of that boundary. Then we're going to head northeast up toward Monroe and then position between Monroe and Jackson for the big event tomorrow. We thought maybe some renegades would try to form ahead of this MCV, uh, Bow Echo, and maybe near the Sabine River. They were going to head toward the Many and Natchitoches area, but it didn't happen. You just kind of had that Bow Echo dominate, lifted up toward I-20 difficult setup. Look at Gizmo. She's very hungry. Eating a lot of food today. Get on this chicken. <laughs> I'm trying to make it last as long as possible, but it's almost gone now. It's like, there you go, Giz. Keep splitting it in half. Yeah, but now, now it's, out. yeah, now we're, now we're done. Yeah, they're saying 1.75 inch hail with that storm northeast of Austin. Heading toward Manor next. If you're in Manor, Texas, and you don't want to blow your windows out. Whale's mouth here in many Louisiana. All right, guys, it's all. Think about 
uh, shooting a quick gas line. This train's still gonna keep going. Good. Ready? That's efficient use of time right there. <laughs> Thank you. Did you? Uh oh, did you use mine? No. Got it. I did get some good B-roll with that. I'm going to send that to you. Yes, you should. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I got a tiny bit. I think you got more than me. Here's many Louisiana. We made it. Is that train in the background? Yeah, yeah still, it still sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, you can do it. I'm about to take it even to the next level. At the light, turn left onto San Antonio You can also choose to take the voice out of something and it'll leave all the background. Affected by severe thunderstorm. Warning issued by National Weather Service. There is a safer route available. There's a safer route. Want to be safer.
Mackinac. on it for the first time today. waiting we can do a report on this traffic if you're going through Manor just off to the east of ooh, that was a big lightning strike Austin be prepared because the toll road that somehow turns into a uh, town with stoplights uh, surprisingly shockingly has traffic on it so uh, if you live in the Austin area and you're heading uh, off to the east just be prepared for the most brain dead traffic system you've ever seen that obviously has traffic uh, and that's your uh, that's your 530 traffic report in Austin from Ghana
go. That's a high cloud of floor right there. The green one is? Mm -hmm. Chicken? You hungry for chicken? Maybe if we get some fast food, guess what? We can get some shredded chicken. Tornadoes are possible with 0 to 1 kilometer shear of about 150 meters squared per second squared. Several mesovortices are in the line. The greatest tornado potential may be on the northern periphery of the bow, where the UTCC is becoming more normal to the low-level shear vector. In addition, it appears that the meso low and potential comma head may be starting to form. Should have just stayed with the I-20 corridor. Nice. That is it's so incredibly shaky. I'll pull over and fix it here soon. Might be able to pull over right here. Yep, got a good view of the storm here. Just anywhere I can pull off, I will. Looks like I can pull off a little bit right here. Very interesting looking storm. Wow, very ominous. Definitely wants to be ramping up. Okay, first of all, get this out of here, please. Why is this so loose, second of all? Okay, let's, let's move it this way. Okay.
Yeah, that's a beastly wall cloud right there. It's a good looking storm now. Okay, let's see, what's the play? Good looking base. Still needs some work, but it's better than it looked before. Something's wrong with this mount, dude. It's really wiggly. Have to do this. Hopefully that'll fix it a little bit. But now something is wrong with this thing. Good. I don't see any defined areas of rotation in this, but it's just a big, broad mezzo with a big inflow tail. Lots of turbulence, though. rotation. Just needs to get a little more consolidated. Yeah, I mean, look how wobbly this mount is. For no reason. It's not like that before. I'm gonna have to stabilize it again, guys. Oh my gosh, how does that even happen, dude? It's having mount, major mounting malfunctions here. Watch that thing go big us. Man, that hatch area is just so big tomorrow. It literally extends all the way from just north of all the way to Georgia. That's just a clown dog on Alexander. Alexander, I'm not gonna watch that for the rest. Alright, it does come a little bit away. Matches, still got me down. I learned a new trick from yesterday. Let's play on cities. <laughs> the Alexandria is right on the edge. Might not be a bad spot, huh? We're not even that far from there, are we? <laughs> like, oh, we're, oh, we're about to hit 49. I don't know. I, 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 
Dang, Gina! Oh, 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 Gina! And yeah, there could be some severe winds in that Monroe area. Or well, we may end up with this stand out in Alexandria too. We're right near the tip of the line. We could just barrel through that melt, but ooh. Sir? Wow, what a problem. Wow. Sir? Wow. We're in focus. I'm on a little bar! Go get him, kids! Go get him! Let's go! Go get him! Go get him, kids! Go get him! Go get him, kids! Let's get him! Let's get him, kids! Ball! Let's get him! Go get him! Let's get him, kids! You gonna get him? Let's go get him! We gotta start acting like I'm doing our best piece of our impersonation. Let's get him, kids! Come on! right after feeding her, so now all I smell is it. It's like, <sighs> can't see your mustache a little bit. <laughs> Come on, kids, let's get him. Let's go get him. Let's get him, Gizmo. Come on. See, this one good to not just yell, just to get it out of your system, so it's, I bet dogs do too.
this is the terrain I'm dealing with? Really? Are you serious? This is the terrain east of Austin? <laughs> Unreal. One mile, hopefully that's a little bit better. Again, sorry for the shaky or the camera moving. The mount is broken. Six. Hopefully I can go south and we can get out of whatever the frick this is. What is this? Wow. to the north now a little bit. Alright, so how do I get north? Jeez, this is just brutal. Alright, this looks like a mess up in my Super messy out there. Oh, you already stuck in that. That's fine. Can you upload? Uh, no. I'd like to go to that. I'd like to go to that. I'd like to go to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chris Hall. <laughs> he's so done with driving in Super Set. He's like, he's driving into Atlanta right now. <laughs> He's like right up here where we are, somewhere here. And he's just like, I'm done. <laughs> you gotta drive through a lot of soup to get to Atlanta. I don't know, it's gonna be soupy all the way. Most of the way, I think. Right. Okay. Yep, yep. You can just pound through the mill, it's all the way up to the pro, but. Alright folks, uh, we are hitting back at it. We're, we're so tired of driving in the mill that I think we might blast downtown Sandria. Right in the western edge of the big moderate risk tomorrow. We're thinking that this convective line, this big MCS with the I-20 corridor in Louisiana, is going to probably push and compress the instability axis a little bit further south. That's why uh, we think that the Storm Prediction Center, of course, has that moderate risk from Alexandria up to Jackson, down to Brookhaven, to get into the Alabama border. See that clean laundry? It's better, huh? It's going to be a really hard thing, isn't it? Yeah. 
far as you've ever been. I think that storm east of Austin is a little bit elevated. I think tomorrow will be a little more fun. Yeah. It was fun we got in those five floods for a little while. Oh, yeah. That was fun. I like my oh, floods. I still got trench foot. So. It feels good, though. I feel productive trench foot. It's good in some rain. You're gritty. Real oh, gritty. Gritty and grungy. Hello. Hey, 
Big ring. Big ring. Live head ring, guys. Drinking and sinking. Took the mess and set up. I struggled to figure out where to target this morning. Just kind of worked the barrack clinic zone and, and stay with the uh, stronger low level wind here for just a chance at a unicorn event. But usually the, uh, the more favorable setups, the perfect setups are a lot easier to change. If you have well defined convergent boundaries, well defined fronts, triple points, low front dry line, and you can kind of know exactly where to target. These setups, everybody's spread out because it's so difficult to forecast. A lot of people just go to kind of the western edge of the greatest tornado probabilities in the Storm Prediction Center outlook. A lot of people are using some machine learning products these days. We use just raw instinct out here. And I don't know if it's more effective. Yeah. Where's Gizmo guy? People are asking Gizmo is right. In the middle. Right there in the middle. She's asleep, so finally she has just been working us it's all day. She finally went to sleep, which is good. Got to see a little bit of a whale's mouth again here. That's perfect. Textbook whale's mouth. That bandana would help me catch some gators. Gizmo finally sleeping. Just not yelling at us right now. <laughs> wow, we're really going for that dynamic view right now. I am. <laughs> I love See that whale's mouth, everybody? You've got an outflow boundary that's pushing out. You've got cold outflow behind it. Almost creates a gyre along the front edge. RKW theory. Rotuno, Wiseman, Clem theory back in the day about maintenance of a squall line. The convection on this front edge is not maintaining vertical development because it should be due to shear, but I think that... Uh, you know, something that's a little bit more normal to the shear, like that bow echo that's trying to go a little bit more northeast. That's that's why the convection's a lot more upright along the front edge. That bow echo. So really, you can kind of look at the strength of the environment shear versus the strength of the gyre within that cold pool, as you have cold outflow underneath, creates a. a Oh, see my hand as it's going in that tumbling motion? Yeah, I went back after it there because it started to get a little 
just watched like the entire wall cloud dissipate before my eyes. So yeah, definitely gonna need some new work done. More signal, guys. statement Winfield many is about to get some rainfall coming in and a severe thunderstorm warning in Monroe it probably feels like a tropical storm up there maybe a little line of renegades from Jenna to Jonesville to Winsboro Gina excuse me sometimes I forget how to pronounce it Around that Austin storm, get ready to grind through the piney woods to make it out to southern Mississippi. I had a long trip. I was so confused. Chris said he was going to Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Atlanta, <laughs> Louisiana. Yeah. Just gotta stay ahead of it. Stay ahead of the milk. The milk. It seems we have sparked a whole discussion in the chat about. <laughs> about Cajun food. Like literally, nice. that's what everyone's talking My about. My favorite is boudin balls. Boudin balls. I love them. I love the pepper jack ones. I love sausage in there. I love boudin balls. I gotta try some this time. Because last time my stomach wasn't going the best, but this time it is. You gotta go to a Cajun barbecue place. It's one in East Texas. Oh yeah. Amazing. Just amazing. I know they're in JJ actually. Boudin balls. He's in the doghouse because he said he didn't want to chase grungy Dixie setups before and now he's chasing grungy Dixie setups. <laughs> it's doghouse behavior. Mile marker 121 headed southbound on Interstate 49. You gotta chase every single grungy setup in Dixie Alley to earn your stripes. Gotta earn your stripes in Dixie Alley in the early season because then you make quick decisions. You chase good, chase fast, chase clean. That's the key. That's why you chase here to make the quick decisions. There's a lot more storms. The road networks are a little bit harder to navigate. Usually always grungy. Really good places in Alexandria chat. What do you guys think? Where's the best boudin? Boudin balls. It's really boudin, right? But with the southern accent, it comes up to boudin. Is it boudin? B O U D I N. I'm gonna go north right here. Hopefully that means you guys get a view or we find a place so I can point the camera towards this thing for you guys. It's a 
bigger road, so there should be some pull-off spots. As long as there's no trees on some of these uh, little pull-off spots, I should give you guys a view in a second. Literally right here, wow. Got lucky. overly so just looking almost to the point that it's a little bit wispy you can tell that one's even elevated above kind of a shallow stable layer when it's surface based you get a bunch of kind of vertical scud you can almost see the moisture getting pulled up when it roots another way you can tell on radar a storm is elevated is when it's moving really fast a lot faster than kind of the forecast bunker storm motion those right now that are in northwest Texas. Even that one just to the east of Cherokee, for example, that one probably looks a little bit more surface based on right there, so it may not be a good example, but you look at the velocity, yeah, it's just botched. That is a pretty sharp gradient on that storm near Elgin, though, on the forward flank, so it might be kind of borderline elevated slash surface based starting to get that S shaped a little bit. I think there's a little bit of subsidence behind this mesoscale convective system maybe. A little bit in the way of some worked over air too. Really just comes with experience. Just gotta look at a lot of radar images, a lot of loops, a lot of storm chasing, and you gotta draw that. You can see that one used to Cherokee is moving really fast, even though it is embedded in some decent flow. Just kinda tell it's elevated. It's not oriented the way they should be. It's the forward flank, we're, the, the gradient, we're oriented more parallel to the storm motion. And I don't think that it's probably pulling in a little bit more storm relative inflow. But you can tell that the forward flank is kind of oriented to that north-south way, even though the storm's moving due east. That's another way to tell that one's probably elevated. Instead of the lamp assist, probably will get massive hail. Eventually it'll head toward Colleen. high quality stream, we probably would have uh, targeted the Austin area just because we weren't guaranteed to have a storm, a storm on stream, but for us, we're gamblers, and we had to go a little bit further east into Louisiana and stay with that low level wind shear. We really wanted to dig a tornado out of the milk today, and in order to do that, you got to progress with the low level wind shear axis, progress with it off to the east. Yeah, that storm near east of Austin is in the same area where those tornadoes happened on March 21st, 2022. Beginning kind of an active early season there. Dixie Alley was pretty active then. 2021, 2020. Kind of more of that La Nina regime. Now we've got classic El Nino milk. And a lot of times Dixie Alley will even have drought conditions in the early spring when you get an El Nino. It wants to kind of close off those troughs out, out west really makes for more of an active plains. El Nino is a lot of the reason why the high plains were so active last year all the way until August. I remember Jeff Petrowski and I having a text message conversation. He's like, we're going to be out here chasing all the way through July. And that was because of the El Nino cranking. Keeps the jet a little bit further south. You have a little bit of a subtropical connection. But one thing that El Nino does is it definitely will shut down kind of your traditional monsoon season in the southwest U.S. Instead of getting those bubbler storms off the terrain, easy to chase flash floods, you get more of those tropical systems that come in, like Tropical Storm, tropical storm Hillary that came in. And it did have some debris flows there just outside of Palm Springs. Whitewater Canyon ended up going berserk. Right, right there. Organizing right here, right now. It's organizing right there. Got left to right, right there. Nothing too crazy, but 
Just watch that feature right there. Watch that feature. That's heading pretty much right at us. Yep, definitely broad left to right in there. Starts expanding a little bit. Let's watch the motion. Let's watch the motion closely. There's nothing crazy. There's definitely a broad spin. Lots of rising, lots of turbulence. Just like that, it dissipates. See, it's just the storm never is able to get its act together long enough to do anything. Every time it gets starts to get organized, it dissipates. It's the story of this storm's life, but still lots of broad rising. It hasn't started like around close to now, like no. it must not be resolving it. Yeah, I don't think it is. No, that's the MCP. Yeah. It's there. Okay, vortex. Seems to max out around Austin. It's like zero to or zero, or zero one Z, and then okay. yeah. Sometimes in that significant tornado program, so it's associated with some capping too. Yeah, we'll see. Well, a little bit over here. We're in Alexandria. Yeah. Toilet paper, and put it in my ears, and put pillows on both sides of my head. She's just taking a bath. That's what we did after Hurricane Harvey. Is all the uh, alarms started going off at the same time when yeah. we lost power and the hotel was destroyed. And every single room just bang, 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 bang. And finally, someone came through with a baseball bat. And started started and started smashing and all. All. I thought about it. I'm not gonna lie. I was raging this morning in my room. Something about the tone too, it was like just it was like right at the right pitch, just make you just make your skin crawl. And I went down there and asked the lady, he's like, oh it'll be fixed soon. And then I waited in the lobby and then I seen him. I went back up and it was still making that noise. But when I went back downstairs, like the ladies at the front desk were all like laughing and joking, and I was like, hey. It's still going off my room. They're like, still? And I was like, it's never went off. <laughs> like, oh, my bad. How could you miss not hearing it?
gizzle shizzle. For shizzle bizzle gizzle dizzle rizzle. At least we're out of the milk. 75 freaking degrees. Let's go. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, frick yes. the Reed Timmer School of Inclusion. Mm -hmm. And if you look for that, mm -hmm. Scud doesn't trick you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure doesn't. We're like that cyclonically lifting Scud, too. Doesn't look very good. It's like dying over here. So we're gonna go up and get this absolute monster hailer up near Lampasas or whatever. That's the new plan. I know this is like hodgepodge. You can probably barely even see the radar, but my GoPro that I usually use for the in-car camera is broken. So I'm forced to do this. So I do apologize. It's kind of, this isn't the usual setup that I'm running for those of you who are new to the channel, but I'm making it work. So we're gonna go get that one. Okay. Focus should be good there. No, go away. Okay, there we go. Let's go get that north one, guys. It's worn for big hail. And it is way more powerful, so it might have a better chance of producing. This water bottle out of here. And let's get on it.
Yeah, they didn't put a new tornado watch. They just stick the severe thunderstorm watch out in front of it now. I wonder if that storm here too wet, too set, could do something. So it's going to light up our road. Yeah, we could almost just bolt to it and it looked like it was doing something. But right now it's, it's definitely maturing there. Chicken and hills got me starving. Craving some beef stew. Whenever I used to go hunting with my dad when I was younger, we would eat like canned beans and beef stew and like uh, Vienna sausages, like right out of the can cold. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> Honestly, the hills is probably healthier than the Vienna sausages. <laughs> Like a little fat protein pocket. Yep. My dad likes like the canned sardines and stuff like that. I couldn't do that. Be gay. Yeah, my uncle Bruce eats those too. Sardines. No way. Yeah. Rough. Rough. Just like you're just eating minnows. Gotcha, Gizmo. We're ready for a walk. Use the right lane to merge onto I 49 South toward Alexandria. At the stop sign, turn left onto River Road, then turn right. <laughs> turn left, then turn right, then turn left and right. Giz, you got a fro. Looks like you got a lion's mane from behind. Proceed to the root. <laughs> yeah, she did that on purpose. She lost it out. She's like, I'm getting ready to go outside. Another oh. storm west of Austin out near Bee Cave. It's probably a little behind the surface though, but... It has a cool name like Bee Cave though. Until that Lampus' storm has uh, some side load. See how that, that's because of reflectivity that's hanging over the uh, dry air. See how it's dry right there? Uh-huh. If you go up, you should be able to see some more air. Interesting. A lot of hail on that thing. But yeah, that's in the air. It's way out in front. Or it could just be convergence on the alpha mountain. Okay, Gizmo. To do that, you'll need a data plan from your vehicle <laughs> manufacturer. Well, you. All right, we shall be back. I'm gonna go grab a drink. I'll come in and chat with you guys on stream.
might be able to get in the path of this and find a canopy and intercept the hail. south for some reason. It's all like diagonal weird roads. I'm losing my mind here in Texas today, chat. This guy's just driving with his turn signal. Everybody that you pass speeds up when you pass them because for some reason they just like, their egos are so big they can't get past even though they're going under the speed limit. That's my experience in Texas today. I can look at chat a little bit here since uh, I'm not doing anything. I mean, driving, but the rain's over. Brother, your turn signal is still on. Maybe he has his flashers on for some reason. Even though he shouldn't really have his flashers on. chonker of a supercell heading for Temple heading south of Colleen and south of Temple, Texas Another 
concept here. Why are we fogging up? Oh my gosh, dude. Every You know, one of my favorite things about getting back in the South is like, when you go to gas stations, pretty much anyone you meet, they all call you like baby. And I don't know why, I guess since I grew up in the South, there's just something that feels really good about that when they're just like, have a good day, baby. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys or gals that are in the South can relate to that, but I definitely can. Lori, what's up? Yeah, it's been a really long grind of a day. I mean, for those of y'all that have been on the chase for uh, most of the day, we've just been grinding through this, you know, very grungy, very rainy setups. Got on some flash floods earlier, but just try to keep in front of this line. And we've been pretty much keeping up with it, keeping in front of it. Just really hasn't done a lot to this point. So, yeah, but we're back in the south. Tomorrow is looking, you know pretty crazy like definitely could be a pretty big day tomorrow for ours tornado wise a lot of big numbers being thrown out there by some of the ai learning models as well as just some of the models in the storm prediction center so definitely going to be you know definitely going to be a, a day tomorrow a long day but today's not over yet we're just uh stopped right here in alexandria but yeah You know, I'm, I'm doing really good, actually. You know, even, you know, the worst day storm chasing today wasn't the worst day storm chasing. But even on the days that, that aren't the greatest when you're storm chasing, you're still out here storm chasing. You know what I'm saying? Gizmo's out. Gizmo and Reed right now are on a break. They're, Gizmo's just been hammering us all day long. So Reed's taking Gizmo out for a walk right now. And I'm sure she's enjoying that. And we stopped and filled up with gas. Hey, Skyler, think <laughs> you like Arby's too? No shame. Yeah, no, it's. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. There are some very friendly people down south, and you know, now that people everywhere else aren't friendly, everyone's friendly in their own ways. I think I'm just really used to the way that people are friendly in the south. Yeah, the last the last events have kind of been, you know, a little bit on the lackluster side when it comes to tornadoes, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. That's, you know, for for people that are trying to us that are trying to find them, it's not the the greatest. But you know, for the people living in these areas, that's okay. We'll just have to see. I mean, there definitely has been a little bit of issue with the past few setups with it just kind of being grungy, convection starting way too early, um, not allowing for all those daytime parameters to get that instability that we need for the storm sometimes and then some of the other chases have just been like it's had one thing but not the you know not the other the other day we had crazy shear everything was you know just skyrocket all the parameters except for moisture and that was the day that we chased the supercar blondie so it just kind of is what it is Here it is, all baby sweetie and honey. Oh yeah, they definitely do the sweeties and honeys here too. That happens all the time, for sure. I was telling them, I knew we was back in the south. I went in there and I instantly got the, have a good day, baby. I love being in the south. They're so nice. The sweeties and the honeys. What was that? They don't call me that. Oh, I want, I want you to go in there and see if they do now. <laughs> oh, sweet. Gizmo, did you have a good walk? She did a turd. Oh! Yeah. Maybe that's, maybe that's what all the bark was about. She was pissed? She's about to be. Oh, yeah. Hey, Giz, come here. Oh, here you go. Everybody, here's Giz. Oh, Giz. Sometimes, there she is. Gizmo, Gizmo. She's always on high alert the second Reed leaves. It happens. She's getting more and more comfortable with me. Obviously, I can never be Reed, but you know, she definitely is getting a lot more comfortable being around me. 
She gets happy when she sees me. That makes me feel good. I love dogs. Obviously, I love Gizmo, so. Yeah, look at all the Gizmo meme. You're, you're famous, Gizmo. Everyone's putting the memes in the comment section right now. You want to get down? Here you go. You can get down. She's going to look for Reed Watch. She's going to be like... She's going to start barking in a second. If you guys... I don't know if you could hear it if you were on the live stream yesterday during the eclipse. Reed was up in the plane and I was with Gizmo here in the truck. Boy, Gizmo was letting me have it, y'all. Man, she was letting me have it. She was she was definitely just like, yes, yes, look. <laughs> yeah. Soda is Coke, yeah. When I grew up in Florida, like, that's... You would like, people would be like, what do you, what kind of Coke do you want to drink? And I'd be like, oh, I want a Sprite. <laughs> um, and then I moved to Oklahoma and everyone called it pop and it was super weird. Man, look at all the gizmo. Look at all the gizmo memes. You see this perked ears, classic gizmo, just scanning over and over for Reed. The way Reed scans for storms and tornadoes, gizmo scans for Reed. You can definitely tell that those guys have spent a lot of time together. I have a Coke bottle tattoo, check it out. I can't have caffeine anymore, so it's kind of a bummer. And it's hard to find, like caffeine-free Coke's hard to find now. But, you know, there it is. There's the, uh, you hear that growl? There's the, so I got a Coke bottle in my hand, but when I'm in Oklahoma, that's a pop bottle. You heard, yeah, Gizmo does complain about me sometimes, so I'm not gonna lie. She doesn't like it that I'm sometimes sitting in her seat and I try to give her all the space, but, She's used, she has a lot of, uh, <laughs> she has, she's used to a lot. Someone said, I want ice cream soda. Look, I also have an ice cream on my knuckle. I feel like you guys could say something and I probably have it tattooed on myself, so. Yeah, it, the first time someone said, hey, do you want to pop in Oklahoma? I, it, it did sound funny to me. Side note, there is an awesome, there's an awesome place just to the north east of Oklahoma City called Pops. It's on Route 66 and it's just a, a really famous Route 66 store that just has hundreds and hundreds of flavors of pop. Hey, Gizmo. Hey, I'm still here. Yeah, that's the I Won't Read Bart. I won't read. My family would drink Diet Coke, so we want me to say I'll have a diet. Okay, that makes sense. Kangaroo tattoo. No, I don't have... You guys, of course, would have said that. But I, I do have a wild number of tattoos. Um, do I have tacos or a slice of pizza? I do have tacos somewhere. I just got to figure out where it's at. <laughs> uh, this is the worst part about having... Oh, there's. I have a hot dog. I know I have... I can't remember where I have... I have pizza somewhere, too. It's bad when you have so many tattoos that you really don't know where they're at anymore. I do have a snake tattoo, yeah. I have a couple snake tattoos. Uh, one of the biggest ones, I have a snake right here on my hand. Uh, Harry Potter, I'm in the Slytherin house, so Slytherin tattoo right there. Yep, yep. A Bucky's tattoo? I don't, but should I get a Bucky's tattoo? I'm definitely thinking of, so if you guys haven't seen, there's a video um, that Brian made that's really awesome on the channel. Go check it out um, about the Alta Vista tornado intercept that Reed and I had. We intercepted a tornado, took a direct hit in the Jeep Wrangler, a red Jeep Wrangler. So to commemorate that, I am now going to get a red Jeep Wrangler small tattoo on me somewhere. I do have one tornado tattoo here and I have another bigger tornado tattoo on the back of my head that has like cows flying around it and everything. I do need a tattoo glossary here, right? Yep, Gizmo is 15. Gizmo's 15, seen over 200 tornadoes. Gizmo still seen more tornadoes than me. And at this rate, I'm probably never gonna catch up, so. I have the Deathly Hollows uh, tattoo behind my ear. I also have the Elder Wan tattooed on my hand. Mm -hmm. Behind my right ear, that's the Deathly Hollows. Behind my right ear. 
And then I have them behind my left ear. I have the word love tattooed. Should I get a gizmo tat? I don't know. I feel like gizmo's not mine. I don't want to like take ownership of her. I mean, I do love gizmo. Uh, we never know. My wife's a data analyst. I bet I could get her to like to do a complete spreadsheet on my tattoos. I'm not gonna lie. Reed's face is a tattoo. Yeah, not gonna happen. I could get it on my butt. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, so many people have Deathly Hollows tattoo. The one, the Deathly Hollows tattoo behind my ear is probably the most common in about tornado that I, I mean, tattoo that I have. Oh, we haven't decided to eat a Skyline Chili tattoo. Whew, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't quite like Skyline Chili that much, so I don't. I don't think that's gonna happen. Route 66 tattoo. Fantastic. Hey, thank you so much. Yeah, the uh, the storm yesterday, or the uh, solar eclipse yesterday was outstanding. It was a lot of fun. I do have a Star Wars tattoo as well. I have, uh, I have Yoda's lightsaber tattooed mm -hmm. on my left hand. I told y'all I have a lot. You guys are naming things and I have them. I'll get a Team Dominator tattoo easily. 100%. Who will get a Team Dominator tattoo with me? That's the real question. I got, that's what I want to know. I want to know who would love to get a Team Dominator tattoo mm -hmm. with me. Yeah, everyone thinks we're in a European. Yeah, it's just not mirrored, guys. When we flip it around, so we're not in your. We're not driving a European truck. We are not. Do you have a bat signal? I don't, but I do have a bat tattooed. Uh, actually, right, right there. There's a bat tattoo with one eye, a one-eyed bat. Dagger and knife as a tornado. I do have a fork, knife, and spoon that cross. It's a fat kid survival kit tattoo. I do have that as well. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm 44 years old. I started getting tattoos when I was 18, so that's why I have so many. Oh, come on. I bet somebody else will get a Team Dominator tattoo with me. Naomi said she would. Gizmo was trying to just tell us that she would get a Team Dominator tattoo. I don't think we need to to um, change anything about Gizmo's beautiful skin, but still. Dang, name the day and time you'll get a Team Dominator tattoo with me. I need to arrange this, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, my life's pretty ruined, land, land systems, you know. It's a pretty rough life I live here, traveling around, chasing storms for a living. It's tough stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know, the sink's off a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. We're working on that. We will get it there. But yeah, I mean, I used to, so my mom told me not to get tattoos. So when I was growing up, I thought I was going to be a musician the rest of my life. And I'm, I worked in the music industry until my 30s. So I did make it a pretty good long time. But then after I'm fully sleeved, have hand tattoos, face tattoos, I was a social worker in the state of Oklahoma. I also was a program manager at the University of Oklahoma. I have two degrees. So yeah, I know gizmo, gizmo. There definitely was a time when tattoos were a little bit uh, 
did kind of, you know, limit what you could do. I, I honestly don't feel like that's the case as much anymore. Even when I was at OU, like you kind of become, it's almost like it gets you more attention because you're like, they're like, oh, you have tattoos and you're smart. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. I do have a flying cow tattoo already, Dan. No kidding, it's on the back of my head. Cheryl, welcome to Team Dominator. Appreciate you. Thank you for becoming a part of Team Dominator. Oh. Oh. Reed has a live here in a few. I wonder if he's out there. I'll message him. Reed has a live coming up. You hear that little, sometimes it's like, I feel so bad cause like her like whimper is so, it's just like so sad. Sweet. Awesome Jason, yeah, Jackson, Florida is a great place. Weather to go, thank you for the $30. I appreciate that weather to go. Big year, severe weather, Midwest still waiting, never stop chasing. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate that. Thank you so much, weather on the go. Appreciate that 30. You're killing it. Thank you so much. You know, once again, thank all of you, all of the Team Dominator supporters. We appreciate y'all. It's the reason why we can get out here and do this. It allows me to be able to do my dream of storm chasing as well. Orange dinosaur on Beach Boulevard. No, if you if you really know that you, that came from the Orange Park putt putt years ago. <laughs> Did you hear that? She can see read now, so she's just a little bit. <laughs> Louise, thanks, thanks for being a part of Team Dominator. Appreciate you. Oh, she's gonna give it to him now. Look, at that. she sees him. As soon as she saw you, yeah. she's giving it to him. Yeah, I'll do the live. I told Brian just we'll shut it down since we're losing so many people. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Shut it down, Brian. We shut it down. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow's another setup. Um, hopefully, it's not as messy as today. Uh, but here is tomorrow. Ready? Real quick. Right there. So this was today. It was an enhanced risk, but for tomorrow, we have this moderate risk. So could be a significant day here. Um, let's see. Let's look at the tornado potential. Whoa. This was updated since I last saw it. Yeah, we have a huge hatched area and we have 15% tornado so yeah tomorrow could get could be uh could be a big day tomorrow um we'll see thank you guys so much for for tuning in thanks for uh working with us through all, all our 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 tech issues have been actually just working behind the scenes on yelling at uh technical support and things like that but uh thank you guys we'll see you tomorrow and never stop chasing have a good night.